the bat. It is January 28th, 2021, and this started out to be a little fun with Jelly Plate, and we kind of went sideways with it. What have we here? Well, we have a re-poured Jelly Plate that I'm going to unmold. We're not going to make a Jelly Plate in this video. There are videos about how to do a Jelly Plate all over the internet and if you're really interested you can speed ahead of the class and uh, make one yourself. Okay, I finally got it out of the mold and it is ready to go. I like to, the first time I use my mold, I like to just brayer on a just a sprinkling of water uh, because I'm using put this down. I'm using acrylic paint in a tube and it tends to be thicker. So because it's thicker, I am cautious about, you know, making sure that it gets wet enough. So all I'm going to do, all I really want to do today is just show you how to lay down, lay down color. color. Uh, we're going to do a simple stripe pattern. This is metallic black. When I, uh, when I do these kinds of prints, I like to keep the colors pretty simple because otherwise if you get colors too, color combinations too complex, you're going to end up with mud. <clears throat> so since I got a big blob of black that I didn't mean to. I'm going to put a little bit of silver down and I'm going to put a little bit of pearl white down. You could put this down any way you want to. I know that I'm just going to do a simple stripe pattern so I am not putting it, I'm not dotting it all over the place. I do want the colors to mix a little bit um, but pretty much a stripe pattern. So the thing you want to practice doing, and this is part of my, the method to my madness, is not scrubbing back and forth. You want to pick it up and get your brayer full of paint while you're covering your jelly plate. And if you miss aside it's going to show up in your print. So practice learning how to spread the paint so that it covers evenly and obviously I'm out of practice but that's all right. That is totally okay. Now for this I'm just going to pull a background print. And I want a little bit of that silver in the black. So, I'm using scrap paper. And normally I would have a white, either I would have my craft mat under this, or a white piece of paper somewhere so that I can find the edges of my paper. I didn't do that this time. Uh, don't know why. So you just want to um, make sure you have good contact and then pull it off and that's not bad. I got some silver blotches but that's okay. That'll make a really nice background. What else can you do with this? Well, you've seen people, I'm going to give it another another spritz because I'm going to pull a shadow print and unfortunately once you get ac acrylic paint on your stencils it's over uh, unless you quickly get them into water and some kind of solution but that I just let it go now, instead of using the, the blank side, I'm going to use a side that has half a print on it from the genealogy stuff. 
and I think I just smeared it, but we'll find out in a minute. And all I want to do is make sure that I get good contact through that stencil with the paint on the plate. There is a tool you can buy. I've forgotten what it's called, uh, but it's like a round thing that um, you can use to go over instead of using your hands. All right, let's see what we got here. Not very much, but still, this part right here will make a very nice print. We'll lay that aside, and I could put this on yet a third piece of paper, but I'm not going to for this demonstration. Here's what our two prints look like, the plain print and the pattern print. So what can you do with these things? You say to me, well, we're creating all these things. What do we actually do with them? They're background prints. Remember, that was what we said in the beginning. We are just making prints for backgrounds. And because our first print was just metallic black, silver, and pearl white, you can't really see it on camera, but it does show up in person. And so I have created some layouts for you to get some ideas from. This first one is a black and white of my Uncle Tommy and his wife and with a little sentiment that says forgotten memories with the clock and then a place to write notes and this could be made into a card put it, printed on heavy cardstock and sent to them as a valentine to say here's something that i know meant something to you this next one is of my uncle tommy and his wife and down in the right hand corner is my favorite uncle my uncle leon Here's one on the plain paper, the ghost print we pulled up, and it is, again, just that picture of my Uncle Tommy and his wife, and then a place to write note. We used that black and white background, but let's mix it up a little bit. Let's dip our toes into mixing up what we actually do with these prints. What I've done here is print that ghost print on a piece of alcohol ink dyed paper and then I pulled out some ephemera that matches the color and I have done a layout with some botanical illustrations and some butterflies and that can all be trimmed and rearranged and put down and then last but not least same thing deli sheet over that printing you can still see if you look really closely that it's family data you can even fill parts of it in and then my aunt and uncle's photograph and a place for notes about this aunt and uncle well never one to let well enough alone i just had to see what this would look like waxed I tried all kinds of different configurations with matting and double matting, and in the end, I chose just the simple forgotten memories and a rain check for American League Baseball Club World Series ticket. There are a couple of issues. You can see some uh, spots where the wax didn't adhere, but that's okay. That's truly all I have for you today. I hope it has inspired you to try something new. Until I see you again in February, God bless you. See you real soon.